Well, hello, my name is Steve and welcome to our family service, which, as you can see, is once again online. And even though we can't be together in person, it's great that we can meet on YouTube and worship God together. Now, this term, we're going to be learning about the story of Jesus in Luke's Gospel. Luke wanted to tell us all about this person, Jesus, and he wrote about what Jesus did when he was on earth, what he was like, who he was and that's what we're going to find out as we go through Luke's gospel and we're going to start with the story of Jesus calling some of his first disciples calling them to follow him and be with him now, I wonder if you can guess what these first disciples did for a living I've got a few clues here to help you um, I've got a little boat you might use a boat um, I've got something you might not be able to see it too clearly there it's some nets and I've got some fish so who might use a boat and nets and some fish any idea that's right they were fishermen the people who would go out into a lake or the sea on their boat throw their nets overboard and hopefully in their net they would catch some fish that's what they did for a living and we're going to find out more about these people in our story today and we're going to be thinking a lot about fishing today here's what we're going to do uh, we're going to start as we usually do with a welcome and finding out about our weeks. Uh, we're going to have a game, which of course is a fishing theme game. We're going to hear the story, the story of Jesus calling these fishermen. We're going to have a craft and then an all new action song that we're going to learn later. And finally, we're going to close in prayer. And we're going to start with a welcome and asking each other about our weeks. What's been something good about your week? What's been something you're thankful for? Now, I know the last few weeks may have been very difficult for a lot of people with lockdown and the schools closing, but it's always good to take a moment to think, what are we thankful for? What can we thank God for that's happening in our lives? Uh, now, to help me with that, I'm going to need someone. So uh, let's get him back in here now. And here's Theo. Do you want to say hello to everyone, Theo? Now, still a little bit shy, but one of the things we've been enjoying this week is how much more Theo is talking these days. Isn't that right? Um, now, he won't normally do it on camera. We're going to see if he might actually try and say a few words. We've got a few props. Theo, what's this here? What's this? You going to say what it is? Are you a little bit shy? Still a little bit shy. Theo, what's this here? Do you know what this is? <laughs> yeah, you're just going to eat it. Is that what you're going to do? What are you eating? <laughs> and Theo, what's this here? What is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a dinosaur. That's right. Well, one out of three, we'll give you that on camera, won't we? Should we say bye-bye? Bye-bye. And just like that, he's gone again. Well, now it's your turn to go around the people where you are and ask them, what's been something good about your week? What's been something you're thankful for? And while you take a moment to do that, why don't you pause the video and then press play when you're ready to carry on. So ask each other and pause the video now. And hopefully you got a chance to go around and find out some of the good things about your week, even at a difficult time like this. And of course, now that we're going to be online for the next few weeks, it will be great to see your pictures and your videos, what you've been doing during the week, what you've been thankful for. So if you'd like to, it'd be great to send them in to me and I can share them in this blank spot here so we can still find out what we're up to and still see each other even though we can't be together. So please do send in your photos and videos. Now, we're going to have our game and as I promised earlier, it's a fishing game. Now, of course, when you have fish, you need water. So perhaps this isn't the right place to do it. Perhaps I might need to go upstairs. So let's go there now. And here we are in our bathroom. Here we can have lots of water in our bath. Now we've got water, we just need some fish. And this is going to be our fish, which is just a sort of partially half blown up balloon. So I'm going to add the fish here to our water, our sea or lake. You'll see we've got a few other things in here as well. We've got our little boat, an octopus as well. But this game's quite a simple one. The idea is to see how good you are at fishing. And I've got my net here, which is just a sieve, and to see how good I am at fishing out the balloons, 
getting them and then putting them to the side. This is the ideal one for little ones to play out with a while. So all you've got to do is get your net in, see if you can catch the balloon, and then get your fish, sorry I should have said fish there, not balloon, get your fish and put it out. See how good you are at catching the fish. Now if you're a really little one like Theo, this is more fun if you actually get in the bath and play it. He had great fun doing that last night. And if you're an older one, you're thinking this might be a little bit too easy for me. Well, don't worry, we've got a harder fishing game in the craft and we'll tell you about that later. Now, as I said earlier, this term, we're going to be learning all about Jesus in Luke's Gospel. And we're going to start today with the story of Jesus calling some fishermen in Luke chapter 5. And we're going to hear that read to us now by Alexandra. Uh, Alexandra, over to you. A reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. Jesus was standing on the shore of Lake Gennesaret, teaching the people as they crowded around him to hear God's message. Near the shore, he saw two boats left there by some fishermen who had gone to wash their nets. Jesus got into the boat that belonged to Simon and asked him to row it out a little away from the shore. Then Jesus sat down in the boat to teach the crowd. When Jesus had finished speaking, he told Simon, Row the boat out into the deep water and let your nets down to catch some fish. Master, Simon answered, we have worked hard all night long and haven't caught a thing. But if you tell me to, I will let the nets down. They did it and caught so many fish that their nets began to rip apart. Then they signalled for their partners in the other boat to come and help them. The men came and together they filled the two boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this happen, he knelt down in front of Jesus and said, Lord, don't come near me, I'm a sinner. Peter and everyone with him were completely surprised at all the fish that they had caught. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were surprised too. Jesus told Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will bring in people instead of fish. The men pulled up their boats onto the shore. Then they left everything and went with Jesus. Thanks, Alexandra. And we're going to have a look at that story we've just heard read to us. Well, except the text plays by a leg. So I think we need to do it by a large amount of water. Uh, I think we're going to have to go to the bathroom again. Let's go. Perfect. Well, here we are back in our bathroom again for our story. And the story begins with Jesus by the shore of a lake. Well, here's our little wooden Jesus and our bath is going to be our lake, Lake Gennesaret. So here's Jesus on the shore of the lake preaching to the people. And as well as Jesus and the big crowd listening to him, there are also two boats here. Here's one boat. There's another boat. And these were groups of fishermen they belonged to who'd been out fishing all night. And actually, they hadn't caught anything, so they must have feeling tired and fed up. There's two of our fishermen there. There's one of our fishermen here. So they just come in from fishing all night and were washing their nets. Here's their net at the side. And they must have been feeling absolutely knackered. Now, Jesus asked one of these fishermen, Simon Peter, if he could go out in his boat into the lake a little way. That way, people could hear Jesus better. And so Simon Peter agreed. So he and Jesus went out into the lake on Simon Peter's boat. So let's put Simon Peter there and let's put Jesus there. And Jesus sat down in the boat and began teaching the people. Here we are, we can see Jesus and Peter on the boat. Now, when Jesus had finished preaching, he said to Simon Peter, go into the deep water, let down your nets and catch some fish. Well, Simon Peter must have wondered what was going on. I mean, he was the experienced fisherman. He'd been fishing all night and he'd caught nothing. And this was now the wrong time of day to be fishing. And this guy was telling him what to do and he was exhausted. I mean, Simon Peter told that to Jesus, but he also said, okay, Jesus, if you say to do it, I'll do it. So that's what he did. They pushed out the boat a little deeper into the lake and let down their nets. And you know what? The nets became full of fish. So let's put some of our fish our balloon fish into the net here. Their nets in fact became so full that they were actually beginning to rip. You can see now we're full of fish in our net here as well. 
and they were struggling to bring it in. So here was Simon, Peter and Jesus in their boat. And they called out to their other fishermen, come and help us. So the other fishermen came out in the boat and between the two boats, they brought it into shore, even though the boats were beginning to sink. This massive catch of fish they caught by fishing where Jesus told them. And when they were back at the shore, Simon Peter knelt down before Jesus and said, Lord, don't come near me, I'm a sinner. And Peter and the other fishermen here, James and John, were amazed at what Jesus had done, this amazing catch of fish. And Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. From now on, instead of catching fish like this here, you're going to be catching people. You're going to be bringing people into my kingdom. So Simon Peter, James and John left everything behind, their boats, their nets, everything, and followed Jesus. They'd seen this amazing person and wanted to follow him. And that's the story of Jesus calling Simon Peter, James and John. Now let's get back to the table. So today's story was all about these ordinary fishermen, Simon, Peter, James and John. And when they were called by Jesus, they left everything behind and followed him. These men saw how amazing Jesus was, this person able to bring in this huge catch of fish. And so they decided to follow him. And Jesus was going to use these ordinary fishermen to do something incredible. Now they were used to catching and bringing in fish in their nets. But Jesus said, now instead of catching and bringing in fish, you're going to catch and bring in people. You're going to bring in people to the kingdom of God. Bring in people to Jesus' movement. These ordinary people Jesus was going to use to do something incredible. And that's the same with us. If we follow Jesus, if we're guided by him, he can use us to do amazing and incredible things. If we follow Jesus, he can do something special with us. So that's why, like Simon Peter, James and John here, if Jesus calls us, we should follow him. And our craft today will help us to remember that story. The story of Jesus calling these fishermen and these fishermen seeing how amazing Jesus was and following him. Because as I said earlier, we're going to make a fishing game, one that we can try out later on. So here's what we'll need for the game. We're going to need some coloured paper, or if you haven't got any coloured paper, white paper that you colour in is fine. And we're going to need some scissors and the pen to draw and cut out our fish. And then we're also going to need some paper clips. I've got a big box of paper clips right here. That's going to use to make our fish for the game. And we're going to need a rod. Now, for the rod, we're going to need some sort of pole. I've got an old brush handle here. You can use anything you've got around. It's just a stick or uh, any length. We're going to need some string for our line on our fishing line. Uh, we'll probably need some sellotape to hold it all in place. And the bottom of our fishing line, we're going to need a magnet. Now you can use a fridge magnet or a magnet from something you've got. I've just ordered one online, but any magnet will do. So once we've got all these things, we're ready for our fishing game. Let's find out how to make it now. So we're going to start by making our fishing rod. And the first thing you'll need for that is your string. It's going to be the line on the rod. And you want to roll out, I'd say about 50 centimetres off the string, which is about that amount there. So cut off about 50 centimetres, maybe a little more to allow for tying knots. And there we have our line. Now we need something to catch our fish, and that's the magnet. So we're going to tie our magnet to one end of the line. So let me just tie this magnet on here. Now you want to be a good tight knot, a couple of good knots, knots on that to make sure it won't fall off. So we have our magnet tied on the line and I'm just going to cut off the bit of string at the end to tidy it up a little bit. So that is our line with our magnet for catching our fish. And then we need to tie it to the end of our rod here. So again, just put a knot in. If you can't do knots very well, get an adult to help you with that. A couple of knots there to keep it good and strong and make sure it stays in place. And I'm just gonna tie that knot there. Now, for this bit, it might not just be enough to have it held on with a knot. So I've also gonna put on some sellotape to make sure that it stays on the end here and maybe a couple of bits of sellotape just to keep it in place because you don't want it moving around you want to be able to control it for the fish so you'll see we have our line and we have our magnet on the end 
So that's our fishing rod I'm going to set to one side. Now we need to make some fish and for that we're going to need some coloured paper, our scissors and our paper clips. And this bit's really simple. What you need to do is to draw a fish shape on here. Something that's a bit like this here. So I'm going to do sort of comes out and then comes in and then goes out into the tail. It really doesn't have to be that accurate. You can see mine there, what it looks like. And then you want to cut out this fish shape or if you want to cut out more than one at a time, you can even pile up your pieces of paper and cut them out. So let me cut out our fish shape here. Or in this case, I'm going to do two fish shapes. And you want to keep drawing lots and lots of uh, fish. You want to have lots of fish ready for the game. So if I cut out its tail here, and do that there, and then do the top side. Again, we don't have to be super accurate in this. That's the great thing about this game. We just need something that looks fairly fish-like, like my two fish here. And then the final bit of this is to take a paper clip for each fish. So I'm going to need two. Here we are. And oops, get another one out there. Take the paper clip and put it on the nose of each fish. That's going to be the bit your magnet is going to use to catch it. And you can just test it works before we do much more. I'm going to get our magnet and put it over. Yeah, you are. You see, look, it catches the fish. Now we're going to need more than two fish for this uh, game. So what we're going to do is I'm going to leave you uh, to cut out and to put paper clips in the nose of several fish. I mean, however many you want, I'd say about eight or ten. That will give us a really good game. And while you do that, let's play a song that ties in with the story of Simon, Peter, James and John. When they saw what Jesus did with the fish, they decided to follow Jesus. And the song was called, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Let's play it now while we finish off making our fish.
I love that song and I hope you did too. And hopefully now you've got lots of fish to go along with your rod here. So we're all ready to try the game. Shall we go and try it now? So here we are at my sea or lake. I've just used a blue tile to put the fish on. You could use anything you want, a paddling pool, a blanket, a sheet, whatever it is that makes it look like a sea or a lake. So what we've got to do is to take our rod and see here if we can catch a fish. And you do that by placing the magnet over its mouth and hopefully it ah, catches just like that one there. That's how you do it. Well, why don't you build a game yourself and try it out and see how many fish you can catch. I'm gonna try and see if I can get a green one now. Let's try it out. Yes, there we go, perfect. And now I think it's time to get moving, get our hands moving around with our action song. And because we're not in church together, and we're in our own homes, that also means that we can sing along as loudly as we want. So really belt this song out when we come to singing it together. Now this might be a new song to many of you. It's all about Jesus and it's called No, Not One. And the only action you really need to know for it this first time out is No, Not One. We'll be doing that a lot in the song. But I'm going to hand over to Sarah now, who's going to guide us through the actions and the song. Over to you, Sarah. <laughs> That's a great song there, all about praising Jesus. And we're going to sing that again next week and maybe the next couple of weeks to help us learn it and get to know it. Now we're going to finish our service today with prayer. Now I know this is a very difficult time for a lot of people, but the good thing the Bible says is that we can take these difficult things to God in prayer. And that's what we're going to do now. And today's prayer is going to use fish and a sieve and some water. So I think we need to go back to the bathroom again. So here we are back in the bathroom with the bath full of water and our balloon fish as well. Now what we're going to do for our prayers is that on some of these balloons or fish is written something that we can pray for. So I'm going to use my net here to get out a fish and we're going to pray for whatever is written on it. Uh, let's start with this one. What's written on the side of this? This one is the NHS. So let's pray, first of all, for the NHS. Lord, we thank you for our NHS and the doctors, nurses, carers and other staff who work there. We pray for them at this difficult time as they become busier and busier. We pray you would give them a chance to rest, unwind and escape and help them cope with the long and demanding days. We pray for the pressure to ease as people get better and fewer people would catch coronavirus. 
Okay, so that's our first prayer for the NHS. Let's see if we can get another one. I'm going to go for this balloon here, and this balloon has written on it schools. So we're going to pray for schools. Let's pray for them. Lord, we pray for our schools and the teachers and staff there. We pray you would give them strength as they've had to quickly adjust to lockdown and providing online lessons. We pray for the children too, missing seeing friends at schools and missing out on lessons. And we pray for parents and carers who are homeschooling. Help them all to know you are with them. So that's schools. And let's do one more. I'm going to get out this one, the little green fish here. And what does this fish say on it? It says on it, church. So we're going to pray for our church. Lord, we pray for our church. Even though we can't meet together, we pray we still be able to worship you and help us to stay connected, especially those living on their own. Now, if you agree with all these prayers, just say amen with me at the end. Lord God, we ask all these prayers in your name. Amen. And let me finish our time together by praying this prayer of blessing for us all. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with me today as we looked at the story of these fishermen, Simon, Peter, James and John, and how they decided to follow this amazing Jesus. And I hope you can join us next week when we're looking at another story about Jesus in Luke's Gospel. Until then, I hope you stay safe and well, and goodbye.